All right, so now that we've got our textures baked out, let's take a look at hooking them up in the node editor when we switch back to the Cycles rendering engine. So first of all, I'm going to go back to my default view here. What I'd like to do is change back to the Cycles render engine and hook all of the textures up to my material. So now I'm going to go up here to Cycles Render. And I think what I'm going to do is, for this object, I'm going to take that material off of there and click New. And I'm just going to call this, uh, uh, I don't know, Kid Material, just so we know what it is. And I should probably call it Cycles. Why don't I do that? I'll call it Cycles so we know that that's part of the Cycles materials. Um, we could switch to one of these um, screen layouts here. I'm thinking maybe compositing. Let's take a look at this. What I think I'll do is set this image, this viewport up to be um, a render camera. So I think first of all what I need to do is create a render camera. So I'm going to press Shift A and go to camera and there is a camera there. And um, over here, I want to switch to a 3D view. And I will press the zero key to go into the camera view. Now I think I'm going to move the camera around to uh, frame up the little guy here. So I'm going to go to local mode that is right over here. I'm going to pull the camera back and uh, let's see. Frame him up so we can kind of see what he looks like as we put our textures on him. Also, I think I'm going to go to texture view here in the 3D view. The first thing I need to do is actually turn on nodes. Um, I'm going to come over here and go to material and I should see my material here that I just created. So here we have the main material, the diffuse, coming into the material output node. What I need to do is add an image texture node to bring in that um, color map. But also we need to make sure that we're telling Blender that we're using the UV coordinates for this. We went through all the trouble of creating a UV map where you need to use it. So to add a node, you can go to Add, and you can get a list of nodes here. I think I want to go to the Input and Texture Coordinates. And here we have a socket for UV, so we'll need that. Now I'm going to press Shift A again and bring in a image texture. And here is what we're going to feed our image into. So I'm going to press open and find that I've got a few of them in here, but uh, here's the one I want to believe. So once we bring the image texture in, we can see it in the 3D view, but we can't yet see it in the rendered view. So what I need actually what I need to do is come here and go to render and let it render that out some. So we're just using the light from the Hemi that we put in here ages ago. Um, if we also wanted to add a little bit of extra, we could go to world here, the world panel, and under world is this ambient occlusion. We could turn that on and bring it down some just so we get a little bit more of an indirect light in our scene here. So I'll make it around, I don't know, 0 0.45, 0 0.4, something like that. So as I said, we can see it in the 3D view, but we can't yet see it in the rendered view. Let's hook up our UV socket to the vector socket of the image texture, and let's, let's hook up our color to the color socket of the, the diffuse material. And so there is, we're beginning to be able to see it now in the in the rendered view. But we can't really see any uh, uh, bump inform 
information here. I'm actually going to use the 3D or the perspective camera here to see this so I can kind of tumble around. So now what we need to do is bring in um, the normal map. So let's do that. I'm going to press Shift A to bring in another image uh, texture. And for this one, let's call this non-color data because we don't really want to bring that bluish purplish color in for the normal map. We just want to bring the bump information. So now I'm going to go to the kid normal here, map. And now look at him. <laughs> That's okay. If we switch over to the color node, he, that that goes away. <clears throat> um, <laughs> I love that. He looks like an Oompa Loompa. <laughs> um, so I'm going to hook up the UV to the vector slot. And for the normal, we can hook the normal map straight up to the displacement slot of the material. Let's see if we can see anything once that happens. I think we can, yeah, you can begin to see that normal information, that bump information in the, um, there you go, in, in the rendered view. So now you've got the normal information there. Now let's take a look at bringing in the specular information. Let's bring in an image texture, and yet again, this is non-color data, and we want to open up the shine, I believe is what it was. I needed to, I should have labeled that a little better, but we'll go with that. And I'll bring that in. Now, of course, you see, once again, if you click on the node, it switches to that. Um, let's hook up the UVs to that. Now for the specular information, what we want it to do is we want it to tell Blender where things should be shiny. So one of the things we're going to have to do is bring in a material node that will allow it to be shiny. So the material node that will allow us to do that is the glossy. So I'm going to press Shift A and go to shader and bring down bring in a glossy bsdf here and so there's our glossy shader now this is going to have to mix with the diffuse and to mix two different shader nodes we need a mix shader so let's go to shift a shader mix shader and i'm going to just hover over here and it'll pop that connection on to the existing link. And so I'm going to bring the diffuse texture in on the top of the mix node and the glossy in on the bottom. And now take a look at him. He is glossy. Woo! <laughs> what we need to do though is we need to say I want you to use this image, this specular image, as the factor of how it should be uh, blended or mixed. Because if I drag the factor all the way down, I get only the diffuse. And if I drag it all the way up, I get only the glossy. So we want to have the level here dictated by this image. So I'm just going to drag this color right over here to the slot right there. Now, theoretically, that should give us some shiny goggles, but that's not quite what it does, is it? it uh, it's also giving us this kind of brown patch. So one way to clean that up is to use what's called a multiply node. So let's once again press Shift A, go to Converter and Math. And now here's our Math node, and we can change it from Add to Multiply. And what we're going to do is we're going to bring this um, specular information into the bottom slot here and then bring it back out straight to the factor slot there. And that helps us clean that up a bit. Now it's still not great. Maybe we could take it down to like 0.4. 
I don't know, maybe 0.3 works pretty well for me. All right, well, that's just about it. I guess there's one more thing we could do. If you wanted the ability to adjust how much bump was here in the normal map, you could also use one of these multiply nodes down here. So what let's do is let's bring in another multiply node. So let's go to Shift A, Converter, Math. And let's switch this from Add to Multiply. And now if we pop this in the link between our normal map and the material output, we can then have some control over how much the normal map is affecting our objects. Okay, so that is the way I would set up. This is a very basic node setup for um, your diffuse, your specular, and your normal information. Well, that just about does it for texture painting. Hard to believe, huh? Um, I think what I will do is I will go back and I will try and finish up the textures on my character here. And when I'm done with that, the next video series will start on rigging the character. So thanks for watching and I hope to see you then. Take care.